Mabuhay. I'm Eugenio Moraleda, and you're watching Landscapes of Learning. Our logo is still the red circle with the three sticks to your right or left, whatever it is, meaning Landscapes of Learning. Learning joyfully. Translated, it is the series meant to let the student, the learner, enjoy learning. And we have four programs as before. You have the Tech or Teach Learn, where we discuss some educational issues relative to the conceptual framework and the concepts we discussed in the very, very beginning of this series. Then the content, of course, is your music. We started with that, and I think we gave you about seven episodes. Then you have, but only for two elements, because we're trying to pace with what's happening at the, uh, in the, uh, the different uh, regions of the country. And then the art component, we're in, we're re uh, we just finished, again, line and color. And uh, now, we're going back before we tackle uh, scenarios. That's for the uh, fourth component, fourth quarter of theater arts, dramas, etc. Now, for today, we will be continuing our discussion on motif. You have there uh, what is motif, like in the visual arts. Uh, the subject is always either a person, a thing, or an idea. These are the three uh, common subjects. But what if we know, how do we describe? In visual arts, we discussed how uh, the subject is introduced or presented. And we talked about two elements, line. How does line describe? How does color evoke emotions. All these things were already uh, glimpsed at, not really discussed because you didn't have time to uh, interact, evaluate, etc. We're just giving you glimpses of the content. Now for today, we are still definitely on form, but this is now music. And uh, the other, ep the preceding episode or the previous episode uh, discussed or let you into what is the structure of music, of how our notes uh, grow, how our notes started, or what do you do, and how do melodies grow and become a composition or a song, like a musical sentence. Do you have closes, you have uh, the beginning close, and then the concluding close, then you get a phrase. But today we will be focusing on motive how does it develop into a short composition or even a long composition like beethoven's tararan, 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 tararan. well you know all of that is very popular and that is a very good example of a motive now we gave you examples of uh, a motive or motives that you can find in some folk songs for today let's start with <coughs> this motive you listen first to the melody and try to focus on the rhythm of the melody. Try clapping it, tapping it, use a stick, use a pencil, use a ball pen, anything that will give you the rhythm of the melody. Leron, Leron Sinta. Again, huh? That is your first motif. That is the second motif. And the first question is, are they the same or different? I continue with the third. That's the third motif. And the question remains the same or different from the first one, not from the second, but from the first one. Again, the same, same or different? Repeat. The 
there were several motif that or motifs that we played and I encouraged you to tap them or clap them or whatever with your right with your left hand the point was we wanted to find out how the first original motif was developed it went up it went down it changed melody but the rhythm remained as notice if you don't listen to the tune you get almost a repeated rhythm you notice that almost until the end of the song you heard that rhythm or the rhythm of the melody that is not the rhythm of the beat it's the rhythm of the melody repeated until the end almost except for one uh, one motif of the end you find it repeated and that is what is a strategy for using motif now a motif can describe any subject like it can describe a person or it can describe a thing it can also describe an idea now for the next piece tell me if what is being described or what is the subject is it a person a thing or an idea I'm not going to tell you what the title is find out from listening to the motif if it is a person a thing or an idea Listen to the motif, this one, no? Uh, which would you consider a uh, motif? The length that I played for just a simple You can break that down and what I played so far up to the very end of what I played right now is would be also be considered a phrase. But the question is, is the song or the piece describing a person? Is it a thing, an animal, a flower, a pet? Or is it an idea? If I tell you about the title of the song, more or less you will be guessing. But I wanted you to feel what the motive was describing. Person, thing, or an idea. Now let's go to the next piece.
little miss up there. Can you guess what the song is describing or what is the subject of the song? Is it, again, is it describing a person or a thing or an idea? I'll repeat just the first motif. Again, ask the question, is this a person being described? Is this a thing being described? Is it a flower, an animal, or an idea? Next song. Uh, I'll play only the first part because uh, this might be copyrighted by Tyria, but just the first part. It's really a very popular song. the phrase or motive that I want you to focus on. Question the same. Is it talking or speaking or describing a flower, an animal, a person, a thing, an object, fruit, or whatever? Can you feel from the rhythm of the song? I will repeat. if the song is describing a subject, a person, male or female, a flower, a tree, an animal, a pet, or an idea. So far, we have given you several motives. That, was, that is, I would consider, only an exercise, an introduction to what the learner should be doing. First, uh, we can retitle a subtitle of this episode could be my song or it can also be me and my motif or my motif and me uh, the objective is for the learner to create a motif that he can later on develop into a song but based on a few steps well in music we don't have what we call a short out uh, uh, Thing about formulas or steps. These are the ways that can be done by, especially, or well, even if you are a composer, you have to start with the first thing, the subject. What am I going to compose? Am I going to write about a, uh, a flower, like a device? Am I going to write about a, a kite, like in Sarangola ni Pepe? Or I will I describe between Marikit? These are the things that in writing, we have to be sure of what do we want to write about in terms of notes. So, uh, it will be closer than that because I want you or, or we want to listen to your ID. Use your name as the start of a motif. Like, for example, if you are uh, Adela, how many syllables do you have? Adela, three. Adela. Now, listen. Oh, I have three syllables. Do I uh, do I say Adela or do I say Adela or do I say Adela? Now, which notes will I use to symbolize or to represent Adela? And it can be any name. Now, uh, just for a guide, if your name it belongs to uh, the letter A, what you sure, whatever you want to, or you use your name. If your uh, name begins with a letter B, C, D, F, use the alphabet to uh, start a motif based on your name, based on the letter. Now, when you have that, listen to the syllables. How are they presented? Fast, slow? Uh, are there accents like Adela? You don't say Adela. You say Adela. So, the second syllable is accented. How do you write that in musical tones. 
Adela. So you have a note plus an accent note, Adela. Are they of the same time value? We have already taken this up already, the time value. Adela. Or do you say Adela? You don't say Adela because then the notes will be different. That is what I'm trying to say. Use your name, the syllables, uh, to guide you in the notes. The times plus, of course, uh, is your uh, name uh, popularly known like John John? Or is let's say, uh, let us say, Abitoy? Or do you say Totoy? Uh, I don't think in this century we have Totoy. I mean, in this decade we have Totoy. And we have, well, my name is you already know, is Eugenia. When my mother gets angry, she uses the full name, Eugenia. And there is an accent there. But when my, uh, she wants to do, me to do something, she said, Eugenia, Eugenia, she calls me that way. So I have choices. In the same vein, in your, uh, at home, because you're staying at home now, uh, listen to how your mother, your father, your brothers call you. You notice they have several ways of doing it in terms of syllables. That should be your guide for your, the first few notes of your motive. Now, second step. Now, uh, the sample that I gave you, Rudolf, the second or third motives talked about who Rudolf was. It says, Rudolf, a red, no stranger. So if it's your name, John John, you are a weak boy. John John, you are a brave boy. So uh, it describes the subject. The best description, that the shortest, briefest, and most common feature that you are showing according to your opinion, huh? not ev everybody. Because I'm going to say, oh, he is a, a lazy boy. No, no, she's a lazy girl. Oh, she's, uh, you know, she's fat because she eats very much. Uh, many, many, she likes lots of chocolates. Ah, no, she likes burgers. Do, so these are the things that you will find in your, these other motifs that will follow. So when we have that motif describing your best feature, the second uh, repetition, the repetition of that motif should tell you or tell us more about yourself. Uh, what do you like for fruits? Do you like grapes, apples, bananas? How about for vegetables? That could be your third phrase. I don't like, uh, I don't like, um, What's this bitter one? The crooked one? Well, I like malungay. I like pechay. I like broccoli, but broccoli is expensive. You seldom eat that. I like uh, cabbage, but cabbage does not have a taste. It's only good for uh, putting it or mixing it with something in, with pancit. But these are the things. And then, if we choose the Rudolph as a model for describing ourselves, then you find a what is your be the best thing that you can do or what are the things that you are good at are you good at drawing singing dancing cooking anything that you think you're good at and you are trusted to do by your parents and uh, your sisters like if you're a good cook uh, everybody is there on the table waiting for your what is it that you cook is it adobo or something and then when you have that, the best things that I can do, uh, that I do, you now have, because of these best things, some people are jealous of me, but because of these best things, uh, some people like to, you know, they say negative things so that people will not like me, but some people are negative. Now, uh, mostly your parents are positive. They will encourage you to do what you do best so that you can keep on doing it. But of course, in some cases, like some musicians or painters, they would say, uh, when interviewed, uh, there was a musician who was interviewed, how did you start as a recording artist? And the answer was quite a surprise because he said, my career is not a recording artist. I started as, a, what's this? I think I, start, I started as a doctor, and then there was a time that they had to record something and my parents asked me to uh, please help us with this recording because they thought because listening to lots of music and other record, recorded things were just a pastime for me. I was so excited. 
uh, in the recording. And th it turned out so well, and everybody seemed satisfied. I also was satisfied, and I realized I could do something with recording. And I started doubling with uh, simple songs sung by other people, not my songs. I don't compose. That is the thing that we're saying. If you're good at this, what have what has happened to you? Now, in terms of, or in the case of Rudolf, because he had a very uh, unusual, shiny nose, there was a time, the, the lyrics uh, says, there was a time it was foggy and Santa could hardly see the night. The night was also quite starless. So he asked Rudolf, which was not allowed by the other reindeers, to join them so that he could be the light of their uh, traveling at night to deliver gifts. So if your best feature is the one that will uh, help you or give you, a, a, is a gift that will help others to make a better life, like what happened, he was able to give light at the time it was needed. So they befriended him or he, it turned out to be a good a case for him. So his problem became a solution. That is what we're saying, trying to say. When you write about yourself, don't forget your good points. Don't forget the problems and was there a solution to it. Now, I think I have talked so much about uh, how to write about yourself. And you can change the title I suggested. And let us see how you encountered what, what you encountered. For example, if you go to the name, your name. If it starts with A, uh, do you want to write it in the key signature of A major? We also studied that, right? Are you a happy person? Then you can write it in A major. Now, are you a sad person? Probably you'll write it in A minor because we agree that minor songs usually make us feel sad. Then you talk. Are you a happy person? Do you like to dance? Do you like to move? Are you, you're not lazy. So you're going to write about the tempo, the mood. Now, when you walk, do you walk so fast or you're almost running or you're very, very slow because you are heavy weight? So you have to walk slowly and all that. So these are the things that will help you, guide you in what notes to use. And finally, not really final for today, uh, look again at how harmony is achieved. It says repeat, okay, we repeat a motif, but we do not repeat it as is. Now uh, it says you can go this way, that way you can go up in sequence, you can go down in sequence, you can write it in a scale, which is really uh, a representation or which complements your name. You, can, you do not say um, Totoy, and, and then at the next sentence you say, Totoy is the king of Egypt. There is no Totoy, and Totoy does not sound like a king of Egypt. So it must balance or sound or represent or complement as in color, it should complement your subject. Are we clear about that? Now, uh, you can write this in four musical sentences, which may be repeated, or uh, that if you repeat and repeat the same motif, you have a unitary form, right? But if you want something really contrasting, you want to do a very uh, dramatic uh, situation, wherein you said, uh, let us say, Ella was a kind person, she was sweet, she was all that. Then suddenly, you're introducing a new mood, a new subject. Then suddenly, which is just part of your thoughts, you introduce a new music. She was kidnapped. And the kidnapper was, I would call, a monster. Meaning, that particular part of your description should sound different. Otherwise, it cannot be distinguished from your description of Ella and your description of the monster. So much for tips. Good luck and let us say you have a good day trying to figure out how do you write or how, how do you put yourself or your name or how you do, tell, do you tell others about yourself through music, specifically motif. Good day and tell us your experiences, email or what ask and questions you might want to ask about how to proceed but proceed go 
do not be afraid that I'm not a composer, I don't, I am not a singer, just go, write about yourself using notes, musical notes. Good day, don't forget to subscribe, it's Landscape of Learning, Eugenia Moraleda. Good day, thank you.